Friday. You have a good one until then. Uh, let's uh, welcome our next guest on the show then, Jigar Mistry, co-founder of uh, Boyne Capital is with us. Uh, Jigar, good afternoon. Great to have you on the show and uh, festive greetings to you as well. Uh, so you tell us it's been an interesting ride in the market, you know, a furious rally from uh, April all the way to July and then this consolidation. As we enter the news somewhat, uh, you know, what's the thought you have? Are you, do you have a cautious bent of mind or do you think uh, we're good for uh, more? Um, absolutely. So, so, you know, I'll sort of season greetings to you and your team as well. Uh, you know, would it surprise you that we are, if you leave out the May 2004 to December 2007 cycle, we are currently in the strongest uh, small cap rally we have ever seen. And I'm including the December 11 to December 17 cycle here. Now, on all of subsequent sort of not to, you know, be a party pooper, but in all subsequent times when the small cap has corrected between uh, you know October 10 and December 11, it corrected close to 45%. Between December 17 and March 20, it corrected 50%. So I think uh, while the going is good, let's all have a decent party, uh, but sort of keep an eye out on all the risks that are out there. Uh, I was telling Nigel earlier that uh, you know of uh, all the companies that have rallied more than 70% over the past six months, 85% of them have been small caps. So I think uh, while, you know, this, may, this time it truly could be different and there is always uh, that possibility. But uh, from an evaluating from an underlying standpoint, I think there is difficult to find a huge amount of value, uh, which will enable, enable a lot of free rating going forward. So India as a sort of phenomenon, as a country, as an investable asset class and equities within that continues to remain very attractive, uh, but need to keep an eye out on where sort of we are going rather than getting too much carried away into the undercurrents. Okay, all right. Hi, Jigar. Good to have you on the show. Uh, uh, you know, as we speak, we have numbers that are coming in as well. Raymond's numbers are flashing for the viewers. Remember, this is one stock that's seen a big re-rating from the recent lows holding at around 1,850, but the stock has moved to the low point of the day because on the top line, there's a very mild growth. And on the EBITDA front, actually, there's a bit of a degrowth. And that's what says that there is a margin compression. I think it's shaved off close to 150 to uh, 200 basis points. So that's why the stock is giving up a little bit from the day's high. Jigar, uh, uh, you know, got your view in terms of how valuations, how the mid-cap and small-cap space as well is shaping up. But what is your advice to your clients? What are you advising right now? Uh, you know, which are the sectors, which are the themes, if you can name a couple of stocks as well, well, you'll have upped your uh, weightage. Uh, the business is, Nigel, that we continue to uh, get very attracted to remains uh, banking financials in the sort of, see, whenever you are having this uh, thing where, uh, you know, FI sell, they can only sell what they own. To that end, you know, you have banking and financials forming top six of the 10 exposures that they have in India. So uh, in a situation where interest rates are likely to remain higher for longer, you will have the value of the underlying assets rising at a time where the largest shareholder will be forced to sell. So in the scenario where, you know, you will, uh, this, in the run-up to the next three or four months, I think uh, adding banking and financial will be a great uh, sort of thing to go by. Uh, pharma doesn't look very bad either. Uh, so that's a place where you've been adding weights, financials, uh, pharma, uh, IT we have evaluated, but don't really see, uh, you know, a lot of value. It's not expensive, it's not cheap, but there is no growth. Uh, so very difficult to take a call there. Hmm. Okay. Uh, stay on, Jigar. We've got uh, Prashant with us in the studios as well. Uh, Prashant, uh, welcome on in. A very quiet day. It's, it looks like people have gone on Diwali holiday already, right? It just going by the large cap screen alone. You know, I raised all the way from BKC. Now you tell me a quiet day. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the big cap. I said, must I, make it. 30 <laughs> minutes to go. But I'm, I'm caveating my statement <laughs> by saying that is applicable only to 50 stocks on the Nifty. <laughs> well, the broader market is doing, yes. is, is buzzing. Yes. No, absolutely. So, uh, point taken. Uh, Jigar, uh, good afternoon. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you guys have been uh, doing well and uh, the fund is growing and it's good to see you here in Bombay. Otherwise, Jigar is, <clears throat> I think I can say with some degree of confidence that he's never in Bombay, right? He's always in some part of the country <laughs> meeting different bunches of uh, investor, pot investors, potential investors, etc., etc. How is the mood though, Jigar? I mean, you have a real sense because you meet so many people. Uh, is it is it uh, one of uh, people still uh, sort of want to allocate a lot to equity or... Uh, or, or uh, you know, where are we there in that sense, in terms of allocation? 
yes, Prashant, nice to see you on air as well, besides in person. But yes, uh, see, equity allocation continues to remain a very great story with India. So it's not a scenario where people are taking a call as to whether it makes sense or not. And even, you know, if you look at the recent sort of elections, I was mentioning to somebody that in 2018, you know, BJP sort of, if you look at the seat share within the legislative assembly versus the general elections, uh, BJP virtually swept all the sort of general election seats, 90% plus hit rates, even when they lost in the state uh, assemblies just a few months back. So I think investors are very, very well cognizant of scenarios like this. Uh, they are more or less keen that the continuity in policy remains. And if risk needs to be calibrated, uh, rather than taking cash calls, they are a lot happier doing it by adjusting the betas of their portfolio. So I think uh, they are rerouting a lot of their investments away from small and mid-cap specific funds to a lot more either multi-cap funds or if you're running equity yourself, uh, then towards a lot more, uh, you know, large-cap oriented schemes rather than or large-cap oriented stocks uh, rather than small and mid-cap stocks. I think that is consistent with what we are doing in our funds as well. We were almost 60% uh, small and mid-cap. So 50% small cap, 10% mid-cap by March 23. Uh, we put out a recent webinar and there we have actually sort of gone the other way. So small and mid-cap are now sort of less than 39% of the fund as we speak. The calls are, phone is ringing. That's I think a, the calls are coming in there. That's a, <laughs> that's a potential investor. Check, take my money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check is on its way. <laughs> I was just kidding. Jigar, uh, tell, I mean, you uh, talk to us about an idea. I mean, one or two ideas which you think are, are looking good, even from here, in an absolute sense where, uh, you know, uh, there, is, there is a lot of upside. Uh, what are those stocks? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the one that we did put out on was uh, something that sort of with the results, uh, our top three additions uh, over the last three months has been one of these companies called RR Cable. Uh, right, uh, it's a space which is fairly crowded, but uh, where margin sort of recovery happens. Uh, that's a company that does sort of reasonably well. Uh, you've seen sort of uh, stock being available at a very attractive valuation. Uh, the margins were at rough. We think that will essentially get re-rated, and we are looking at uh, you know industry leading quality and industry leading growth there. So I think both those sort of tick marks happen as far as RR Cable is concerned. Uh, there is another company which we sort of added was a company called Avas Financials. Uh, we didn't own it for a very long period of time, but I think with the shakeup in the management that has happened and the sort of stock giving in a lot of uh, value after that, I think affordable housing, uh, pristine asset quality, undemanding valuations, I think all of them define Avas Financials. Uh, the results may take sort of a couple of more quarters for the new management to set in and uh, settle down there. But I think those are the two large additions or rather top three additions that we even put out in the public. You, you said three. We got two. RR, RR couple and uh, Avas, Avas. is the third one. Third one was ICICI Lombard, but then who really wants to own large caps these days? So... so <laughs> Thank you. People just want to sort of know and understand what's really happening in the small and mid cap space, right? So, large cap companies, I and mean, I was just sort of before you joined in, Prashant, telling uh, Nigel and Sufi that this is the second sort of strongest rally in small cap that we have ever seen in the Indian equity markets. And if you take 25% at the index level as a correction, uh, then uh, uh, sort of in the two corrections that has happened post 2011, uh, index fell 45%. Uh, between Jan 18 and March 20, small cap index fell 50%. So an eye out is something that at least we are really wanting to keep out as far as the small cap exposure is concerned. All right, Jigar, any view on all this renewable theme or the <laughs> path theme? Any way you all have played it? Uh, you know, in terms of renewable energy, you have uh, Suzlon that's, you know, gone from strength to strength. We had a bit of a dip intraday, but that's taken off again. And in terms of power reforms, you know, there were PFC, there was Genus Power, you know, various other ways, smart meters, power financing companies, or core power companies as well, like a JSW Energy. Have you played either of these two themes? Um, 
Yes, Nigel. So see, in and out, yes, maybe. But I think, you know, uh, sort of being a utilities analyst comes with its sets of baggages, right? So I have for all my life been one of the utilities analysts besides metals, etc. But uh, you've seen the APDRP fail in 2012. Then I was very happy when Uday, got, Uday was first announced in 2015. Then I was again happy in 2019. By 2022, 23, it sounds like the same broken record, right? The problem in India is that the, if you look at the entire value chain of the utilities, then uh, you know uh, the losses are at the distribution stage and those are controlled at the state uh, sort of level. Now, uh, because it's in the counter interest, right? So the central government can put up the wires. Uh, the, the responsibility that power flows through them is there with the state governments and they are burdened with losses. And most state governments see utilities as sort of, uh, you know, normalizing the Gini coefficient rather than a commodity that should be priced evenly. So unless this set, this story is settled, I fear, you know, power sector in India might not really find a sustainable valuation upside that uh, we've been hoping for a very long period of time. In absence of that, you will have, you know, one of these sort of short-term plays where you'll say, oh, you know, because the sort of state discounts cannot get into LTP, long-term power purchase agreements, uh, therefore something like who is selling power on the shorter-term exchanges might make sense. Or the power exchanges at times because of rising volumes and rising heat makes sense. But if you are truly wanting to deploy large capital or large percentage of capital into a power sector, that sadly still remains elusive. So RPO can cover part of this renewables point that you mentioned. Some state-led capex can in turn, in just in the shorter time, lead to upsides. But uh, it's not getting re-rated in a hurry. At least sort of that is my assessment of things. But as I said, see, the package of the past uh, prevents people from making a lot of money in sectors that are talking around. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot. Uh... Jigar, for stopping by and filling us in with your take on the markets and individual stocks as well. If you don't speak till Diwali, wishing you, your team, a very happy Diwali and all the best in making a lot of money for your clients as well. Well, for the time being...